In this video, we're going to see how to integrate functions of the form secant to a power times tangent to a power. And we'll start with this example of secant squared times tangent of x dx. For this, we're going to approach it much the same as we did with the powers of sine and cosine. But we'll have to think carefully about our u substitution. Because with sine and cosine, if u was one of the functions, du was simply the other function with possibly a positive or negative sign that we had to be careful with. But if u equals sine of x, du equals cosine. If u equals cosine, then du equals negative sine. So more or less, u and du is one function and the other. In this case, we have to be a little bit more careful because if we let u equal secant of x, then du will equal secant times tangent. If, on the other hand, we let u equal tangent of x, du equals secant squared of x. And that's why we reviewed the derivatives for secant and tangent at the beginning of this section, just to remind ourselves of what would happen when we select one or the other to be u. But once you recognize that, we're going to approach it in much the same way. We're going to think about splitting off something to serve as du and then letting the remainder work in terms of u. Now this example that we're starting with is actually easier than it looks at first because if you look carefully we could for instance select u equals tangent of x and we don't have to do any sort of rearranging because right away du equals secant squared dx and every piece of this integral can be replaced in this substitution so this simply becomes the integral of u times du because tangent of x is our u secant squared and dx are du which we can then integrate to get one-half u squared plus c or one-half tangent squared of x plus c, and we're done. But it turns out there's another way to do this one. See if you can pause and find out for yourself what the other way is. But if you notice, we could also define u equals secant of x. Because when we do that, we have secant times secant times tangent instead of secant squared times tangent, which means when du equals secant times tangent times dx and we rewrite this as secant times secant times tangent dx this integral is still u secant of x times du secant tangent dx to make sure that you can see that but once we do that we integrate and again get one half u squared plus c but in this case u was secant of x so we get one half secant squared of x plus c. And again, it looks like we've gotten two different answers to the same question, so it seems like there's a mistake somewhere. But of course, this is like one that we've seen earlier, where the only difference between secant and tangent, or secant squared and tangent squared, more specifically, is a constant. Because remember that when we find this alternate form of the Pythagorean identity, we find that tangent squared of x plus 1 equals secant squared of x. Or you could say secant squared of x minus 1 equals tangent squared. You can rearrange this whichever way you choose. But this means that, for instance, we can take the second line and replace secant squared with tangent squared x plus 1, which would give us 1 half tangent squared plus one half plus c, and the one half folds into the c to give us this other form. So really these two answers are equal, and the difference between them is just a constant, so that arbitrary constant c sort of wipes out or washes away that difference, and it looks like they're the different answers, but they're really the same answer. So for this one, we didn't have to use this identity but in other examples that we'll do here in a second, this identity will come in handy and we'll need to use it 
as we're setting up our u substitution. But always think through first what these two options are, that you can let u equal secant or you can let u equal tangent. And in each case, you should think carefully about what du will be and see if that will work possibly with this trig identity added into the mix. So let's see an example of that in action by integrating tangent to the sixth times secant to the fourth. So now again, remember that we can either select u equals tangent or u equals secant. So one option is to let u equal tangent of x and du equals secant squared, or we could let u equal secant of x, and then in that case, du would equal secant x times tangent x dx. Now, unlike the last example, this time it turns out only one of these is going to work. The last example was a special case where either approach would work. This time, and for most of the ones you'll see, really only one of them will work with our trig identity that we have to work with. So if we let u equal tangent, then we'll need to split off a secant squared to serve as du. So what that would mean is we rewrite this as tangent to the sixth times secant squared times secant squared. So we've broken the secant to the fourth into secant squared times secant squared, specifically so that we'd have this secant squared times dx off by itself to serve as du. If, on the other hand, we let u equal secant of x, we would want to write this as tangent to the fifth times secant to the third times secant tangent so that the secant tangent dx at the end would serve as our du. So in this case, we would rewrite it this way. In this case, we would rewrite it this way. Now look carefully at those two options and see which one of them is going to work. And again, you might want to pause the video here and see if you can work out which one will work and why. But let me point out that the second one is problematic because once we separate off secant and tangent, our goal is to write everything in terms of secant, which part of that is okay, but then the tangent to the fifth poses a problem because we have an identity that relates tangent squared and secant squared, so any even power of tangent would be fine, but an odd power of tangent poses a problem for us. So that means that second approach is not going to work. So let's mark that out. On the other hand, let's see if the first approach works. Here if this secant squared is split off as du, we want to write everything else in terms of tangent so that we can replace that with u. Now this first part tangent to the sixth is totally fine. And then the remainder is secant squared, which we can rewrite using the Pythagorean identity in terms of tangent. So that leftover even power of secant is something we can deal with. So in a minute we're going to write down the general approach here, but you can just think through what we want to happen in order for one of these substitutions to work. In the first case, if we're going to let u equal tangent, what we're looking for is an even power of secant. Now make sure that makes sense. Because we're going to pull off secant squared as our du, what needs to be left over after we do that needs to be an even power of secant that can be rearranged using the Pythagorean identity. So it needs to start out being even so that when we pull away secant squared, what remains is still even. So if we're going to use u equal tangent of x, we'll need to look for an even power of secant, which is what we have here. So that works. On the other hand, if we want to use the substitution u equals secant of x, what do we need to have? We are going to pull off secant and tangent, and in order to rewrite everything else in terms of secant, all the remaining tangents will need to be 
an even power. Make sure that makes sense as well. If we're going to let u equal secant, in our substitution, we need to start with an even power of tangent after pulling off secant tangent. So that means at the beginning of the problem, we would need an odd power of tangent. So when we separate off secant and tangent, what's left over is an even power of tangent that can be replaced and rewritten in terms of secant. It's easy to get mixed up and lost in the details, but we'll write this down in a minute in full detail. You can already, though, see the pattern that's following. We're either looking for an even power of secant, where we'll use this substitution, or we're looking for an odd power of tangent, and we'll use this substitution. So if neither of those things happens, then this approach doesn't work. But if we have an even power of secant or an odd power of tangent, then we can approach it this way. If we happen to have an even power of secant and an odd power of tangent, that's when we can approach it the way we did the last one, where we can choose either substitution and both will work. So here, the only possibility is u equals tangent of x because we have an even power of secant but not an odd power of tangent. So if you got lost in the details there, that's okay. We'll write down the procedure in just a second. For now though, once we've rewritten it this way, we can now replace secant squared with the Pythagorean identity so that everything except for this du will be rewritten in terms of u. So we can write this as the integral of tangent to the sixth of x times tangent squared plus one times secant squared dx. And now we can make our substitution. If u equals tangent of x and du equals secant squared, this equals u to the sixth times u squared plus one times du. And then to integrate, we'll just distribute getting u to the eighth plus u to the sixth du, which becomes one ninth u to the ninth plus one seventh u to the seventh plus c, or one ninth tangent to the ninth of x plus one seventh tangent to the seventh of x plus c. And now we're ready to write down this full procedure. Again, the two things you look for are either an even power on the secant or an odd power on the tangent. And written in a lot of words here is basically what I outlined earlier, that if you've got an even power of secant, that means u can be tangent. And when you split off one secant squared, all the secants that will be left will be even which means you can rewrite them in terms of tangent using this identity here. Rewrite everything in terms of tangent, let u equal tangent, and carry out the u substitution as always. So that's the example we just finished doing, where secant had an even power on it, and we can let u equal tangent of x. If on the other hand, the power of tangent is odd, now you can split off secant tangent as your du, and all of the tangents that are left will be even because it started out with an odd power of tangent and you separated off one of them with a secant, leaving an even power of tangent behind, which means you can use this identity to rewrite everything in terms of secant. And then when you select u equals secant of x, the u substitution will work as always. So again, if the power of secant is even and the power of tangent is odd, you can choose either one, and either approach will work. You might want to see which one's easier. And if the power of secant is odd and the power of tangent is even, then this approach will not work. And in that case, your fallback is basically to rewrite things in terms of sine and cosine and see if something simplifies. We won't deal with any of those in this section because in this section we're concerned with ones that do fit this pattern. So we're focusing on ones of this specific form, more or less. So we're going to do one more example where we'll carry out this procedure. But it's very straightforward, just following the pattern that we observed here. And you shouldn't try to memorize this procedure or memorize these terms. 
but rather think through the process and make sure you understand the why behind all of this. Make sure you understand why this is happening and why it works. So the last example we'll see is tangent to the fifth times secant to the seventh. Again, remember we always look for an even power of secant or an odd power of tangent. We don't have an even power of secant, but we do have an odd power of tangent. Which means we want to separate off a secant tangent as our du which tells us that our u will be secant of x. And once we separate that off, we can rewrite everything in terms of secant, which can then be rewritten in terms of u, and we can integrate through u substitution. Okay, so let's separate that off, and we'll rewrite this as tangent to the fourth times secant to the sixth times secant tangent and then we'll rewrite tangent to the fourth as tangent squared times tangent squared so that both of those can be replaced using the Pythagorean identity. So this is secant squared minus one times secant squared minus one times secant to the sixth times secant tangent. And then when we make our u substitution, letting u equal secant of x, we can rewrite this as u squared minus 1 times u squared minus 1 times u to the sixth times du. And then we basically need to expand this out, do a little algebra, and I'll run through that relatively quickly. u squared minus 1 squared is the same as u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1. And then when we distribute the u to the sixth, we get u to the tenth minus 2u to the eighth plus u to the sixth. So that when we integrate, we get 1 over 11 u to the eleventh minus 2 ninths u to the ninth plus 1 seventh u to the seventh plus c. And then the last step is just to replace u back with secant of x. So the answer looks kind of complicated, but the actual process was not very difficult. Once you know what you're looking for. So again, we're basically just doing u substitution, but the added piece is the use of trig identities to make that u substitution doable. And then also a little bit of pattern recognition that we can use to select u and du early on in the process without having to try several different options. So by recognizing the overall structure and the pattern, we can save ourselves some time and effort and take the right approach from the very beginning.